Hey, what's up? So today I want to talk about something called cinematic texture. Whenever people want to get a film look or a cinematic look, they typically initially chase things like plugins and filters and certain color correction or grading techniques, things like that, that mainly have to do with color. Uh, well, in this video, I'm going to talk about six different ways that you can make your uh, film or project look a little bit more film-like, a little bit more cinematic, and only two of those have to do with color. Everything else has to do with texture, how the image looks, how the image feels. So let's jump right in. This intro intentionally left blank. Okay, so here we go. So I'm basically just going to go through all of the different tools that DaVinci Resolve has that cover these different traits. Again, those traits being midtone detail, the black offset, the curves high, soft, saturation, color temperature, and the grain. So let's jump right in here. So the first one that I want to talk about is midtone detail, kind of like I mentioned before. This basically takes the higher contrast areas of an image and it softens them. You can choose to soften them or sharpen them. But if you're trying to get a more cinematic film look, here we are, it's in the basic primaries color wheel tab. And then here is midtone detail. A lot of people don't know about this, but you can see I have this one set to negative 42. It's really just whatever looks best for your image. All of these are just example images and they all probably have very different midtone detail changes. But to show you what this does, if I basically now go into full screen, this is how much detail you could see before, which, you know, in a lot of cases is not what you want to see. And this is once I apply midtone detail before, after, before, after, and you can see this is the kind of situation where like it's a very sharp, crisp, digital lens where you see every single detail, whether you want to or not. You know, the wrinkles here in her head and you basically see everything, all imperfections. And a lot of older lenses just don't do that. So by applying just a very soft mid-tone detail, there you go, you soften everything up. There are a lot of different ways to do this, of course. This is just, you know, one of the ways that I do it. And I, you know, sometimes I do mid-tone detail. Sometimes I just simply soften it a little bit. And I also want to mention that all of these tools here are designed for anyone who has DaVinci Resolve, just the basic free version. There's other ways to do this when you have the studio version, of course. But this is just, you know, I wanted to cater this for the free version so that I can be sure that Pretty much anyone who downloads DaVinci Resolve for free can do these different tools. Okay, so that was the mid-tone detail. It just kind of takes that harsh edge off of an image. And so then the next one will be the black offset. And I'll use this tool here as an example. So if you go again into the HDR tools here, and, but right now we're talking about this B uh, black offset. I have it set to 703. And again, every image is different. It's whatever caters best to your image. So if I then reset this, you can see how this image looks. And you see just that small adjustment there. And you can see there before, after, before, after. And again, this is a tool, you know, a lot of times just kind of giving something a little bit more character by raising the shadows up a little bit. Um, and again, this tool just simply is a way to raise or lower the shadows based on your image. And for this image, I raised them a little bit. You could, you know, of course, also lower them a little bit if you want to, you know, create a, a slightly different look. But in this case, I thought that going from going from this here, a little bit more crisp blacks to a little bit more washed out shadows created the look, the kind of softer, more cinematic look that I was going for. Went from this to this, before, after. Of course, it's all a matter of taste. So the next tool, and you can see I'm going through these pretty quickly, is the curves here, high soft, H dot S here. And again, you can set this to whatever you'd like. And this will basically just, if you have anything that's clipped or too bright, it just creates a soft curve with those highlights. So rather than having a very harsh 
uh, bright digital highlight. It creates just a little bit of a softer image. Here I set it to the max level of 100 just to really show you because I know through the compression some of these things will be harder to see. Um, but if I then reset this you can see how right here, all of this, you know, brightness, you can see the shininess of her face. It doesn't look that great. Um, that's basically what that does. And there we go. You know, and there's a lot of different ways to uh, make these adjustments here. And I can see this add a little bit more of the, you know, kind of pink magenta into those highlights, you know, which depending on the image can actually be a little bit better than something just being very clipped, very blown out. But if I just kind of scrub back and forth, here's a zero. And you can see that image kind of softening up a little bit. And I'll just leave it at 100 there so you can really see what's happening. Um, and this tool here is similar to, you know, some of you that do have different film plugins. Um, for example, in Dehancer, there's a tool called, you know, Film Compression, which behaves just like a lot of film, 35 millimeter film does behave in the highlights where rather than just having a very hard, bright highlight, it has a more softer, smoother kind of glowing kind of look to the highlights when they get brighter. Okay, so now let's jump into the only two color tools that I was mentioning. And that is basically, you know, in the HDR tools again, just adjusting color temperature, you know, and not in this, in this situation, I made this one warmer because I thought it just gave it a little nicer look to it. But again, you can go in whatever direction fits the piece a little bit better for you. Um, I just chose to make this a little bit warmer. Sometimes going in a cooler direction helps. And then on top of that, you know, you can also go the same way with saturation again. So for this one, for example, if I showed you the original saturation of this shot, you see, again, a lot of digital images seem to be overly saturated. Um, and just like way too red, way too yellow, green, magenta, and just, you know, a good rule of thumb a lot of times when you have a very digital looking image, is just go in there. You know, it's up to you what saturation method you use. Um, you know, you could, you know, depending on the image, you just use this overall saturation in the primaries window, or, you know, I like to use saturation in the uh, HDR tools, you know, some of you might like doing the additive or, you know, subtractive saturation, the HSV method of desaturating or saturating an image. And you can see that, you know, just by bringing that down a bit, it just kind of gives it a little bit nicer look, you know, rather than this like very red look on his face. Okay. And then the last one here is a bit of a bonus. And this one does require the full version of Resolve but I had to mention it just because it has such a big impact on an image and that is grain. So this is again, just the, the uh, film grain that comes with the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. You can do, you know, film convert grain, you can do dehancer grain. There's all these different grains out there, but you know, as you all know here, for example, if I just play through this with grain, you should be able to see that they're playing back. But you know, if I just kind of like blow this up here and this is the grain, this is without grain. And if I just kind of go through it, you can see in his eye here, you can see just how much the grain really adds to the image, which, you know, if there's, which of course is one of the more important, you know, characteristics of getting a kind of cinematic film like image. So again, it's all of these things combined together, you know, help take something to go from looking like this originally, very sharp, red, saturated, very digital looking to something a little bit more like this. Again, that was before, after, and all of these things combined, I think really help kind of boost the image in a much nicer direction. Okay, so that was it. I hope you learned a lot. Again, getting a film look, you know, there's a lot of things involved with getting a film look besides just color correction. There's lens choice, there's wardrobe, there's set dressing, there's cinematography, all kinds of things. These are just a few things that, you know, if you wanna give your very digital image a softer, nicer, more cinematic kind of look to it, you know, it's definitely not a cure-all, but it's something that's very helpful. I usually, you know, grab a power grade, drop this onto the footage, and it's a great place to start. So again, hopefully you learned something. 
like, subscribe, comment below with any questions, and I'll see y'all later.